Hello everyone, Blurta here. I'm here today to tell you about one of my favorite anime series ever, Birdie Wing Golf Girl Story. The new season is finally upon us and this video should serve as a great recap if you've forgotten anything during the almost year gap since season one or if you're just curious and only hearing about it for the first time. And if you're wondering whether or not you should add Birdie Wing season two to your spring 2023 watch list, the answer is a resounding yes. And I'll tell you exactly why in just a little bit. But before I do that, if you watched the last season of Birdie Wing and thought that it was the greatest anime that you've ever seen before, feel free to give this video a like and let me know exactly why in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you haven't done that as well because how else will you know when I make a new video? And with nothing else to beg for I guess, let's finally get into it. Now, I'm not typically a sports anime type of person, and I definitely wouldn't call myself a fan of golf, but when it includes magical girl style attacks, violent explosions, transforming underground golf courses, mafia hits, romantic subplots, Gundam builds, and more, well, that sort of changes things a bit. And while it may not technically be the first animated series to feature women's golf, Birdie Wing makes golf a sport that I usually equate with boredom, dare I say, fun? When the characters in Birdie Wing have a problem, they take it to the course in the form of intense high stakes golf battles. And to ensure its accuracy and portraying the game of golf correctly, well, as accurate as you can get with aforementioned things, the show staff consulted actual golf experts like professional golf coach Toru Inoue and members of the Global Golf Media Group during the show's creation. Birdie Wing is an anime original series that features a mostly female cast produced by Bandai Namco Pictures and directed by Takeyuki Inagaki, who has also worked on shows like Rosario and Vampire and Chiyo School Road. It's written by Yosuke Kuroda, writer of shows like Kokoro Library, Puni Puni Poemi, and Valkyrie Drive Mermaid, and its theme song, The Aggressively Upbeat Venus Line, is sung by Komihiro Ose. Her intention was to put a lot of heart into the opening song in the hopes of giving the series more momentum, and wow, she most certainly did that. The opening song, in combination with Eve's big hair, will immediately transport you back to the 80s, and be sure to keep an eye on the golf ball being teed in each episode's opening credits because it frequently changes as a fun little easter egg from the animators. And honestly, the entire OST is just fun to listen to, so you'll literally never miss a beat, but enough about the show's background, let's get into what it's actually about. Evangeline, last name unknown, or Eve as she's often called, is a 15-year-old street-smart underground gambling golfer living in the fictional country of Nefres, an inexact anagram of France, which may or may not exist in Ryder Crota's Mad Lags and Valkyrie Job universe. I've seen a couple of interesting fan theories, but I'll let you all decide that on your own. And this is not the only outside anime reference in this series. Fans of Gundam, Saint Seiya, and even S. Cryad will also feel right at home watching Birdie Wing. So Eve, our main character, competes to support her found family, which includes Otaku Lily, a huge gunpla nerd, Klein, a mature older sister type, and Klein's three adopted children, Charlotte, Jessica, and Emily. Taught everything that she knows about golf from former legendary pro Leo Milfenden himself, Eve uses her drivers and balls as a figurative gun and bullet of sorts to pierce through not only the hearts of her opponents, but their minds as well. She makes a living in the criminal underground world as a golf hustler, often playing an underground contest on behalf of mafia-tied gamblers and taking on their costly bets. And by every definition of the word, Eve is a straight shooter. She pretty much only knows one way to hit the ball, and that is really hard and really straight. And in true battle anime fashion, she makes sure to yell out the names of her strokes right before she takes them. They're kind of like magical girl attacks, complete with fancy names and animation, so it honestly never gets old. And her attacks are not the only thing that set Eve apart from everyone else. She's quite spunky, very rough around the edges, her way of speaking is very rough, and she just oozes confidence and determination. Eve is quite reckless and is always willing to take a gamble not only with her golf but with her life as well, especially when it comes to the ones that she loves. Her motivations for playing golf all the way down to her surrogate family's livelihood being in trouble with the local government is very Happy Gilmore-esque as the family barely gets by living in the slums under the watchful and aggressive eye of the police. But one day, everything changes in Eve's life when she illegally enters into a professional women's golf tournament and a girl meets girl, love at first sight, meet cute, reminiscent of Romeo and Juliet, she comes across Aoi Amawashi, a wealthy Japanese golf prodigy born to two international golf superstars. And her entire world is turned upside down as she finally finds a worthy and very cute opponent and later on partner. The two quickly become close despite how vastly different they are. Aoi serves as a foil to Eve as she only plays golf purely for the love of the game, but when Aoi meets Eve, she's completely captivated by her playstyle as it's very different from her own, amongst other things. The two are extremely infatuated with one another and want to do nothing but continue playing golf together, and this is where the story really takes off. 
After missing a 5 a.m. golf date before Aoi is to return home to Japan, and once VR golf has proven itself to not be enough to make up for the distance, promising to face Aoi again in person, Eve gets involved in a violent feud between Mafia bosses Catherine and Nicholas, unknowingly making a deal with the devil in the process. She ends up facing off against the Grim Reaper herself, the pair, who looks are strikingly similar to that of a snake, complete with fangs and other reptilian traits. Hmm, where have I heard this story before? During the match, the pair constantly tries to seduce Eve via her scent, body, and anything else she has up her sleeve. I mean, down her shirt, but they all fall flat. Well, the seduction attempts anyway, and the two eventually become good platonic pals and nothing more. Ironically enough, Eve's desire to face off against Oe again is what leads to the destruction of her entire neighborhood. The power of teenage hormones and the desire for a good old-fashioned rematch, am I right? So as part of an urban renewal project, Catherine, the mob boss, and other corrupt politicians in Nefres set out to make all the money that they can by building a casino right where Eve's family lives and operates their business. And while it may be dangerous and rough, it's the only home that Eve has ever known. I mean, literally, because she has amnesia, so she can't remember any other homes. And after being tricked and narrowly escaping death at the hands of the mafia, Eve uproots her entire life to move to Japan to enroll into a prestigious all-girls Japanese school, Ryo Academy, known for its golf program and enters into the world of competitive high school girls golf. How's that for making a long distance relationship work? Now that I think about it, it doesn't actually make sense because if she's trying to keep a low profile and avoid being killed by the mafia, becoming a known golf sensation is not exactly the best way to avoid attention, but whatever. So anyway, about her new life in Japan, Eve completely embodies the nail that sticks up from her blonde hair to her fashion choices all the way to her mannerisms, so she ends up winning the attention and admiration of most of her peers while also making a few rivals along the way. I mean, give her any look and she can most certainly pull it off, so it sort of makes sense. And her fluency in Japanese for some odd reason, the only thing that doesn't cause her to stand out in her new home may indicate that she may have spent some time in Japan before she lost her memory and was discovered in the streets of Nefres by Klein and Lily. And at one point in the series, Eve even shares with Aoi that she can't remember anything from her childhood, implying that the pair may even be related in some way or have some sort of not so distant connection. And if it turns out that they are sisters in any capacity, well, that could get really weird really fast. So let's hope that isn't the case and focus on the relationship between the two girls as it stands in season one. Aoi is known as the innocent tyrant in the golf world as she defeats her opponents with her sweet smile and adroit play style. The complete opposite of Eve's hot-headed and brash style, Aoi is able to remain calm and collected under pressure and is very receptive to criticism while Eve is quite stubborn and won't let anyone change the way in which she plays golf. Until she meets Aoi, that is. Eve is very aware of Aoi's crush on her and she uses this to her advantage at times. And while Eve might be intent on corrupting Aoi, she doesn't have eyes for anyone else, despite her flirtatious nature. A very impressive feat for a teenage girl attending an all-girls school. She even goes as far as to tell the pair after her many advances, there's already another name in my heart, I don't need anybody else's. Eve is attracted to Aoi's cool and collected style of play on the course, the complete opposite of her own risky and aggressive style, but off the course, Aoi is often tripped up and sent stuttering over Eve's antics, a very exploitable weakness on Eve's end, but Eve is determined to become successful in the golf world, so she never fully admits to being in love with Aoi as she has other responsibilities outside of love and teenage dating. Eve becoming a pro golfer to protect Lily and Klein from having to return back to what is implied several times as sex work and the orphans from being deported back to Syria, Somalia, and Palestine as they're in a fresh by most likely illegal means. So she uses golf, a sport usually associated with the rich and elite, to make a living for her poor multicultural family living in the slums of Nefres, which is a lot of pressure when you remember the fact that Eve is only 15 years old herself. Despite this, Eve never lets her situation break her and she continues on her path to success. She has dreams of becoming a big name in the world of golf and she'll stop at nothing to ensure that her dream becomes reality, which includes the distraction of Aoi. But the romantic aspect of Birdie Wing isn't completely overlooked as Eve paints Aoi with promises of kisses for match wins, teases her with actual kisses, and performs a variety of other things to fluster the innocent tyrant. At one point, Ichina, Eve's caddy, sort of breaks the fourth wall to point out the blatant Yuri aspects of the show, so I'm sure season two will delve further into this relationship, but only time will tell. I mean, there are plenty of things left unanswered by season one's end, and I was left with an entire list of questions by the last episode, and I'll touch on them in a moment. And even the way in which the first season ends sort of leaves you confused as the last episode's preview just seems like a preview for next week's episode instead of its almost 10 month gap. But 
For all of its lighthearted and ridiculously humorous moments, Birdie Wing handles heavier topics quite tastefully as they are also very important elements to the story. Personally, I think this is a series that has something for everyone, so you definitely won't regret giving it a watch. And joining all of us in watching season 2, which has probably aired by the time this video is posted, I mean, I've given season 1 several watches myself and it still hasn't gotten old for me. Same tears, same laughs, same feels. And I'm sure that everyone can at least relate to some part of Eve, whether it's making sacrifices for those you love, putting yourself in new and uncomfortable positions, or even just dealing with the prospect of first love. It's entirely possible to put yourself in her shoes as she's a very likable character, well, most of the time, and a self-professed lady killer too. So as you move into the new season, I have a couple of questions that I would like answered myself. What is the relationship between Aoi's mom and her coach, Coach Amado? Who exactly is Leo? And what way does the Amawashi family ruin people's lives? Why did one of Aoi's biggest rivals train under her father? Are we sure Aoi is really the legitimate child of both of her parents? Why does Eve look just like Aoi's mom, but fate awaits Aoi and Eve both on the course and in love? What exactly is killing Coach Amado? Why is Aoi having an identity crisis in the brain in the trailer for the next season? And most importantly, who is she? So I'd like to thank you all for giving today's video a watch as it really does mean a lot to me. And if you're just as excited as I am about Birdie Wing season two, be sure to give this video a like and if you have any theories or questions in regards to the next season feel free to leave a comment below. Subscribing to the channel is a great way to stay up to date on all of my new videos and channel updates and turning on notifications is cool too if you really want to stay in the loop. But until next time I wish you all a very happy new season of Birdie Wing and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!